One God is worship, Tawheed al uluhiyya The ultimate truth is that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, besides whom no other gods exist. This testimony or kalima is the pinnacle of mankind's existence, and from polytheism or shirk we must desist. Allah created men and jinn in order to worship him, and it's an honor that we were given such a great opportunity. For although he is not in need of creation, we desperately need him, and as humble slaves glorify him in his unity. The best of men were the prophets, and each one submitted themselves to monotheistic worship, pure and clear, beginning with Noah, peace be upon him, who said to his people, Worship Allah, you have no God beside him, and to hold that dear. Obviously, it's not enough to affirm the existence of Allah as the one true Lord and then ignore this vital aspect. For if he is recognized as the giver of life and death, provisions and fortunes, then worshipping him shows respect. So channeling all worship to the one true God and physically implementing this monotheism or Tawheed is a must. Worship or Ibadah is the reason for existence and abandoning Tawheed al uluhiyya is unrighteous and unjust. Realistically, a worshipper can never thank Allah for all the things He has given us, but remain in faithful proficiency. Angels have praised Allah since their creation, yet they'll tremble on the last day for a lack of worship deficiency. Since all creation relies upon Allah as their creator, sustainer and manager of all affairs, all other gods are invalid. And since, without boasting, he has testified to himself being the only true God, to his worship must all be rallied. Just as the body needs food, the soul needs to be nourished with his worship, but this tranquility is being ignored. One day the world will realize the answer to its woes is turning in complete submission to Islam with Allah as Lord. All of Allah's true messengers had the same clarion call. Worship Allah and discard all the false gods or tagu. They never called to their own worship, such as the idolatry in taking Jesus as a god, but revealed the same truth. Most of them do not believe in Allah except while joining partners to him, said Allah of Makkan's pagan tribes. They recognized his sovereignty, dominion and power, but invoking minor gods like Lat and Uzzah they prescribed. Some claimed they followed the religion of Abraham and even performed hajj, prayer, sacrifice, vows and charity. Yet Allah rebuked them for setting up partners to Allah, thus cancelling their good deeds and monotheism's clarity. The Kaaba in the days of ignorance or jahiliyyah was full of hundreds of idols to whom pagans ritualistically bowed. As nowadays with any religion besides Islam, their actions were wasted, misdirected to shirk by which they vowed. There's no need for an intermediary to reach Allah, but personal prayer and invocation grants direct access undenied. On his deathbed, the Prophet, peace be upon him, cursed Christians and Jews who worshipped their prophets as gods after they died. If the worst sin committed by man is shirk or polytheism and idolatry, then it holds that Tawheed is the best act. Muslims recite in the five daily prayers, you alone do we worship and from you alone do we seek help as a fact. If you ask in prayer, only ask Allah, and if you seek help, seek it only from Allah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also reiterated, even atheists yearn for God's support when facing danger on a ship or airplane, and only on landing feel liberated. People underestimate Allah's power. He is able to listen and respond to invocations of all creation in synchronicity. His kingdom isn't diminished by fulfilling requests and he doesn't tire of answering our prayers in merciful felicity. It's comforting to know that when you feel depressed, Allah is closer to you than your jugular vein, able to support. He sees, hears and has knowledge about us, whilst being above the sky, above his throne and by prayer he is sought. 
The Prophet peace be upon him said, prayer or dua is worship. So it is wrong to pray to dead saints or ancestors to fulfill needs, as shamefully they cannot even help themselves. So setting them up as intercessors to Allah is a damnable deed. For example, Catholics call on Saint Christopher for strength, just as ignorant Shia say, Ya Ali Madat, for Ali's, may Allah be pleased with him, aid. In reality, both are slaves of Allah by themselves, awaiting the last day just like you. In doing this, shirk is obeyed. Likewise, deviant Sufis have labelled Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani as Gauthi Azam or the greatest rescuer, calling his name instead of Allah's when calamity strikes and venerating graves, pure idolatry to the impartial viewer. But their justification is the same as the mushriks of Mecca, who said, We only worship idols to get closer to God. Just as Catholics visit lords, Shia and Sufis visit graves for miraculous cures by dead ones buried in soily clods. And just as deviated Shia believe their imams are infallible to whom many give khums or a fifth of yearly earnings, Catholics have celibate priests who forgive sins by confessions and an infallible pope in a holy see, money churning. Worship in Islam is more than rituals like prayer, fasting, zakah and hajj, for ibadah involves directing emotions. For an intimate relationship with Allah means to place in Him your love, hope and fear by fully committed devotions. Muslims strongly affirm, my prayer, sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah, Lord of the entire universe. From the moment they wake up till the moment they sleep, they direct their actions for His sake, not being averse. An aspect of Tawheed al-Uluhiyya is abiding by the rules of hukum or sharia that Allah has legislated in Islam. The Prophet peace be upon him said that monks and rabbis are taken as lords besides God when they decide what is halal and haram. It's a shame that in a world full of billions of Muslims, not one country can be held as an example of an Islamic state. This is a humiliation for turning away from Allah's deen, dismissing Allah's laws, for secular guidelines being the trait. Allah has said, whoever sets up partners to Allah in worship, they will abide in hell and never enter paradise at all. So for Christians who take Jesus as a God, there is a dire warning to turn to God alone before they take that fall. Yet there are even so-called Muslims who deride the Sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, accepting only the Qur'an as a fix. But they delude themselves, setting up their own intellect as a god, taking and leaving Islam like a pick and mix. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Whoever does a deed not sanctioned by me will have it rejected, dismissed as innovation. He also warned, Whoever turns away from my Sunnah is not from me, whether in laziness or extreme deviation. Ibadah or worship is that which Allah loves and is pleased with of speech, actions and intentions, open and hidden. We must obey his commandments for contentment of the heart, enjoin the good and stay away from the forbidden. For example, worship of the heart is love and fear of Allah, of the tongue is dhikr and of the limbs is praying and fasting. Allah doesn't need any provisions or food, it is He that provides, so seeking His face will lead to heaven everlasting. Some arrogantly turn away from his worship claiming it is meaningless or more realistically they claim it's too hard. Yet, for example, Allah has allowed the shortening of prayers whilst on a journey so Islam is easy to practice and guard. In fact, if a person makes it his intention that he will do an act to please Allah, then worship extends to any deed, whether removing a harmful object from a path, smiling at a believer or setting up soup kitchens for those in need. Similarly, he fears that Allah will punish him if he does a sin and stops himself from addictions that he used to do. So the best high he can get is seeking the ultimate high, the pleasure of Al-A'la, the most high which he pursues. Knowing his next heartbeat is permitted by Allah, wishing a high station in heaven after death, not leaving it to luck. His worship is enhanced by trust and hope in Allah, and in reliant humbleness he turns to Allah as if poverty struck. 
A person hasn't grasped the sweetness of faith until he loves Allah more than he loves himself or any other thing. When this happens, Allah is foremost in his thoughts wherever he walks, talks or acts, and to guiding love he clings.